My name is Sam Michelis, and today we're going to take a look at the early 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro in 2019. I bought this Mac used a while ago to start video production, and it's been a very solid device overall. This is an almost fully spec'd out model with an Intel i7 5th generation processor, 16GB of DDR3 RAM, and a 256GB PCIe NVMe SSD with Intel Iris Graphics 6100. In today's standards, the processor with the measly graphics might seem outdated, but running on a system like Mac OS, optimization was surely in the minds of the software engineers making this machine great for both everyday use and pro level apps such as Logic and Final Cut Pro, which is being used right now to edit this video for you guys. The build quality on this laptop is very solid and ideal, as the unibody aluminum can pack a pretty big punch in terms of durability. As you can see, my device has noticeable chips around it, but that doesn't mean you should just go around tossing your laptop around. It still has components in it that can very much break upon impact. And in case that incidents happen, it'll survive, at least the body will. Which brings me to my next point, the screen of the MacBook. It's very beautiful with a resolution of 2560 by 1600, as well as being one of Apple's retina displays. But in terms of screen quality, that's where it was sort of a hit or miss situation. Some MacBooks suffer from an issue called stain gate, which occurred when the anti-reflective coating essentially came off the screen. However, when the coating came off, giant imprints of either the trackpad or the keyboard would permanently be stained on the screen, as well as the edges where the bezels are. If you were affected by this issue, as of June of this year, Apple was doing free screen replacements until I believe September, meaning you can get a brand new screen if you buy this device off the used market. Now onto my next point, structure. This MacBook is very far from perfect. For a 13 inch MacBook, it is kind of heavy, but that is mostly from the strong aluminum, which is one, protecting your vice, but also two, still make this machine look very modern to this day. However, if I did have a few complaints, it would be that the black plastic hinge on the top of the device. I know that's where most of the antennas are, but it's a huge downside in terms of as aesthetics. Keep getting that word wrong, but I'm glad I got it right this time. In my opinion, my biggest issue with this machine is the massive, and I mean the massive bezels going around the device. Today, newer MacBooks have them in very, very much discreeter lays, as well as the rumors of the bezel-less 16-inch MacBook Pro, but this is simply adding a unused screen body ratio, but this was a 2015 MacBook after all. On to my next complaint, and don't worry, I will get to the pros in a bit, is the horrible, and I mean the absolutely horrible 720p camera. It is simply just not good at all, and even on the 2019 MacBook Pros, they are using the exact same. At least they didn't downgrade like when they did with a 480p camera on the 12 inch MacBook. And onto my absolute favorite part, the port, aka IO. Unlike newer MacBooks, you are practically dongle free. It features two USB 3 ports, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, a single HDMI port, headphone jack, and for content creators like myself, SDXE memory card slot with the infamous MagSafe 2 power connector, which the newer MacBooks did away with all that for the Thunderbolt 3 ports. Which speaking of MagSafe, that, and I mean that is a real lifesaver in case you know you, a family member, pet, or a friend decide to walk right past your charger cord and yank the whole computer with it, yeah, you're safe with that can't say the same with the 2016 and above. I almost forgot to add to this while creating footage for the video, but one thing I love is this MacBook does have a force touch trackpad. If you're new to what this means, essentially you can click anywhere on the trackpad and it will simulate an actual click without having to be touching the very bottom. Essentially, there are pressure sensors underneath the glass that detect how hard you are pressing. That alone was a strong reason I picked the 2015 model. Now, going on to performance. The MacBook can do mostly anything basic, and you can even push it to do video editing as well as 4K rendering and Final Cut, as long as you use fewer shaders and nothing graphically intensive. This Mac doesn't seem to suffer too much from thermal throttling. 
However, if you replace the thermal paste with something more premium, that can be a huge help in terms of performance. Or go crazy like me and apply fully liquid metal, which I will have a card at the top linking to my video on that. And on the battery life, I would say now it would be pretty mediocre. On my machine, I have over 400 cycles, which Apple recommends replacing when you are over 1000. But on typical web browsing, I get around 5 to usually 7 hours of battery. On Chrome, I get much lower, which is why I recommend Safari when carrying the device portably. While well, editing on Final Cut, I usually get around 3 to 4 hours, which is why I highly recommend being plugged in at all times while editing, because it will wear out your battery much, much faster by using many more cycles. I personally have a lot of experience in these battery wears on these computers. Apple originally said it could hit 9 hours, aka an all day battery, but as years get on, go on, sorry about that, macOS will get more resource heavy. Now how do I personally think this Mac is held up over time? I think it's held up pretty well as I use this for every single one of my content projects, as well as a great portable experience for traveling. Even though I own a pretty specked out gaming PC, I find myself turning to the Mac simply because I'm starting to fall for Mac OS and the integration between all of my products. And as this machine continue drops in price, and the fact that it's possible to upgrade the SSD in the Mac to an NVMe, it's pretty straightforward to replace the battery yourself if it's worn, and a flexible price on sites such as eBay, the beautiful design on the screen, I have to conclude and say the MacBook Pro is great, and I do recommend this model in 2019. It has its flaws, but the pros, the ports, the optimization, the trackpad, and the standard keyboard, the machine is a strong one for sure. If you enjoyed my video, please feel free to leave a like, and if you didn't, that other button works too. If you want to see future content from me on similar products, subscribe. Thanks for watching, have a good one. See you guys.